We're here at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh to speak with Dion Lombard, who is the importer of this handsome airplane behind him, but there's one on the ground in front of us, you might say, that's coming next. When we were over in Europe, we took a good look at the FX-1 from Innova Aviation, and uh, we were very pleased about it. We're sorry we didn't see one here, but we're looking to see one soon. I'm Dan Johnson speaking with Dion Lombard. Dion, you've had some. Let's do this first. You've had some success here at this show with the uh, L600. I That's hear. right. Yeah, we uh, we sold two, and we hope to uh, get a couple of flight schools involved that will replace the 172 fleets. All right, with a with a 182 with, or uh, with almost the, a 182. Yeah, look, 182 look alike. Well, and it's, uh, as a matter of fact, this airplane was designed, Dion told us earlier, as an 80% scale of the Cessna 182. But I've flown this airplane, I'm telling you, it outflies the 182 completely. It's certainly in a sense of handling and agility. Uh, the 182 is a fine airplane, but it's it's a it's a truck going down the road. This is a this is a motorcycle going down the sky. A lot of fun to fly. So congratulations Thank you. on having a decent show with that. But now let's turn our attention to this thing that we're seeing on the ground here in front of us, and we'll have some images of that, of course. But it's the FX1. Tell us, give us the overview of what that airplane is, and then we'll talk about when you're going to have them available. Well, this is a fourth generation of uh, the previous model that was uh, wrapped in canvas. And uh, now uh, it's a carbon fiber uh, clad uh, finish on the fuselage and it's tubular structure behind it. It's welded steel underneath? Welded steel okay. alloy and believe it or not uh, it is very lightweight. It's the same weight as the Aeropilot which is really cool. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, a couple of interesting points about this is that uh, if you look at the uh, at the cabin uh, position versus the uh, propeller, uh, you feel like you're sitting in a chopper. It's amazing visibility. So we call this the sports car of the of the sky. Uh, I did get it. I did get to sit in it at Aero uh, just a couple of months ago. Saw the actual product, and uh, you're right. It's also got these big curved doors on it. Uh, really, a serious amount of curve to them. Uh, not the way you might think, just bubbling out at the side, but north uh, top to bottom and it made entry just a breeze mm. which is good the older model was much more difficult to get inside this one uh, people with a little flexibility issue are going to have no problem turn around sit down pull your legs inside basically yeah i'm turning as a 60 pound sorry to say that but uh, <laughs> i i made them make it big enough for me so <laughs> well i noticed alfredo enjoys a pasta dinner now and again too so oh, yeah so how tall are you again i'm 62 62 and 260 pounds and you fit in there and i could make it in there no problem mm. all right so so this is an airplane ready for americans who enjoy a hamburger now and again and that's great um when do you think you're going to see this guy? We had hoped to see it here, but they decided to make a change with the engine and that sort of slowed things down a little bit. Tell yeah, me we, more. We had our hopes up to have it in time, but um, I basically insisted that they move to the fuel injection engine because uh, there's a big demand for that. And, uh, That's the modern engine now. Yeah. So. And uh, so uh, with the fuel injection and, uh, you know, bring it on the market the first time we'd like to really uh, make an impression so we thought it would be better to wait a little bit and have it for the next show so it's in production they doing the engine testing and uh, unlike uh, the carburetor engine the fuel injection engine does run a little bit warmer so uh, we're working with intercoolers right now so when it's going to come here it's going to be a hundred percent all right, great stuff. Well, it's a fascinating airplane. I used to know this as the Jetbox 99, and I like that too. I flew that. Other than getting in it being a little bit of a challenge, it was a nice flying machine. But this thing here has that sort of Italian touch to it. It just, it looks, the, it, the picture doesn't even do it justice. It's sexier looking than that when you see it live and in the carbon fiber. To, uh, uh, to Americans that are looking at this, one of the questions that I heard from a lot of people, and we don't do pricing, but you got to get them in the ballpark anyway, because you have a very attractively priced airplane in the L600, uh, as, as affordable as almost anything out here. How about this one? Well, we had to add a few dollars extra for the pasta, but uh, it's going to be about 135. 135. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, all, carbon fiber is not cheap stuff, especially now that Airbus and Boeing are using it in huge yep. quantities. So these guys have got to compete with that, but. 
that uh, carbon fiber is a, a, a challenging enough to work with, but also expensive to buy. So mm. uh, you get the top end product, you're gonna have to pay a little more for it. The nice point is that you can remove all the cladding in about two hours. It's all quick fasteners. Is that and right? You can inspect the whole airframe in a very short time and put it back on. And the, uh, well, the engine that would be handy, now, yeah. wouldn't it? That'd yeah. be cool. Yeah. I and didn't know that fact about it. That's great, Dion. And the engine has a, a, a sort of like an inch uh, to get to the accessibility, make it easy. Like opening a canopy. Open like a canopy uh -huh. of a car. All right, another good idea. Mm -hmm. I, I love the way it's enclosed. It makes it beautiful and smooth. Of course, that means it's harder to work on than one that's just exposed out yeah. in the air. And two luggage doors, one on each side. Okay. Oh, and yeah, you can put your little, little just step slightly ladder. slightly after the main door. Yeah, put your little step ladder in there to have access to the engine. Ah, okay, there you go. Yeah, because the engine is up a little yeah. ways on this yeah. one. So, All right, now, have you flown the aircraft yet? Uh, we've flown it uh, uh, in the east coast of Italy, me and Pete. And uh, you feel like you're in a chopper because it's all visibility it's <laughs> unbelievable this is this is a really sporty feeling I told him to make it Ferrari red and put a Ferrari next to it because it's really sporty <laughs> <laughs> well it does look good in this all black finish that he had there because yeah. it shows off the carbon fiber so well and yeah I think carbon fiber looks pretty I think a lot of people do but yeah, what a lot of people don't know is carbon fiber does not get damaged by the by the Sun if this was fiberglass it would be a problem yes but right. the black carbon fiber is really cool and long people love it and and it's uh, in Endures last yeah, a long time. Can take so, the sun, yeah. Plus, of course, it's also we all know it's all light and everything. Yeah. But this is just cladding. Underneath is welded steel. So for those that may not be a hundred percent sure mm. about carbon fiber, mm. I think that attitude is disappearing. Mm. More and more airplanes are using it. But for those that are unsure, well, it's just got that smooth exterior look. Inside, it's familiar weldments, just like you've seen since the beginning of aviation almost. Now, where do we find you on the web, Dion? Uh, well, it's best to go th uh, through my Aeropilot uh, website, which is uh, sales at Aeropilot USA. Okay, and, Aeropilot uh, USA. And we will have a link com. to this one as well. All right. Yeah, AeropilotUSA.com. So you'll find this later on, you're going to have a separate website, you we'll said, but we'll for now, up, you'll yeah. be able to click right same to the information. Same phone number, same website. Yeah. Okay, great yeah. stuff. You're based in Southern California. Southern California. We're thinking about opening a base in, uh, in uh, Florida. Might not be a bad idea, because otherwise, you're going to put a lot more miles on this guy. We, uh, How many miles on this particular? <laughs> this airplane looks brand new. How many miles on this one? Well, this is the first model that arrived, and it's still flying after 50,000 nautical miles. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> Look at that good. 50,000. You've gone back and forth across the country. Uh, we've done 10 trips back 10 and forth. Trips. I, I couldn't even remember anymore. Yeah. And uh, I've flown this airplane, and this is a nice flying airplane. Even better than I expected. I thought I'd like it. That old 182 look-alike thing, but it outflies the 182, and it was a delight to fly. I'm looking forward to flying this one, and we'll do that as soon as you can get one here for us. On this way. All right, <laughs> sounds great. Thank More you. information about Aeropilot USA, the FX-1, the L-600, and lots of other aircraft in the affordable aviation space. Find that on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Dion Lombard and myself here at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh.